He's not even smart. He needs Lucius Fox. And I'm like, you're not even a detective. You're supposed to be the world's greatest detective and you can't even fight. He's with Batman that's just in this, like, this thing. Whoa. Well, you have thought about this, oh, yeah. Oh, man, it bothered me <laughs> so much. It. Hi, my name's Father Mike Schmitz. This is Ascension Presents. I am with Nielsen Carlin, who is a sacred artist and a, how would you describe yourself? A well, sacred artist, that, that works. Yeah. yeah. An sacred. artist who does sacred work, I well, think actually, it, it all, yeah. yeah. Say, that all say, works. You're a holy painter? Uh, I don't know about that. I'm working towards that. <laughs> yeah, with God's grace, art. yes, I'm working in that direction, yeah. Uh, you have a background not only with sacred art, but yes. also superheroes. And was that your entry into art through the world of comic books? Yes. I've been drawing since I was a kid very early, and I picked up on comic books very early. So, I think I was just going to college and seeing a larger art world that, that uh, showed me some areas that, that I wasn't thinking about when I was in high school. Why yeah. sacred art? Well, sacred art, I, I got into that about eight years ago. I got really excited about working for the church because... I was doing some sacred work uh, before I became a Catholic, but didn't realize the market I was looking toward, yeah. the Protestant community, was not interested in images. So finally well, I, guess, I, became yeah, a, I became a Catholic and came into this community that was all about images. So after 2000, I was really looking for my first you know, commission yeah. so I could do work for parishes, and that came in 2008. So it was... It took a while to get my foot in the door, but the doing the sacred work, um, you know, at some point I realized that it really kind of harkened back to the comic work because I started doing yeah. a lot of saints. And yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah. is, there, is there a connection in your mind and like in your faith and your heart with that? Here's these people that were inspiring as a kid, like yes. the superheroes. Yeah. And some of the people you paint now. It was one night I was doing some work for the St. Paul Seminary, and I had a mannequin dressed up like Mother Teresa. And I had a Spider-Man movie playing behind me as I was working one night, and I kind of laughed to myself that, ha, huh, Spider-Man's got nothing on Mother Teresa. And that's when it clicked that I never really strayed from comics in the sense I was doing heroic individuals yeah. in costume. So, But back then doing comics, I, I couldn't see where it was all going. That's so there so was that cool. big loop. Uh, uh, but it took me a long time to figure out well, the direction. One of the things that, that, that was so glorious about working for the church was, you know, anytime you ask someone to look at a painting that you've done, any piece of artwork, you're asking them to think about this image that you're presenting or the sculpture. Yeah. And a lot of the work I was doing for the, the secular world, it's not that I couldn't get behind it, but I wasn't fully invested in being able to take someone and say, look at this, I want you to think about this. And I didn't necessarily want to focus on it when I was doing it, mm -hmm. but working for the church, I'm invested in the subject matter because I want to think about it and I'm asking, I'm hoping people, it will bring people into thinking and contemplating about the image. Yeah. I mean, the art is a vocation then. It wasn't just a matter of like a nine to five thing, but I felt a real calling and, and coming into full communion with the church just completed that whole path. So when it comes to Superheroes, why are they so enduring and why are they so universal? Like, I will still read comics now, I'll still collect comics now, and I know around the world people do the same thing. What is it about comics and superheroes that we love? Well, I have to assume, I mean, for me, of course, you know, I, I, well, at least all the boys I knew wanted to have superpowers, but I think the enduring <laughs> quality is, is the quest for the heroic, which yeah. is why people still go back to classical mythology, to other stories where they're seeing human beings in really difficult situations and, and those situations bringing out the best in them. So yeah. I have to assume it's that, it's the search for that, or it's the respecting that heroic yeah. quality in so human beings. More than just like powers. Yeah. It's yeah. using those powers for like something bigger. Actually, that's really interesting because that's a, a sense of like, we can't all have powers. But we all can do the right thing. Right. So we all can't be superheroes, but we all can have that sense of like living a heroic life. Right. I think we're all made for that. So speaking of heroes and heroic lives, um, you are a Marvel guy. Yes, I am. And I am a DC guy. DC. DC. I'm a DC guy, which is funny because you are in my DC. Well, I do well, still have some Green titles, Lantern. some DC titles. And yes, actually, and I'm wearing. Uh, I'm wearing Captain America. I'm wearing Marvel right now, so this is interesting. Well, you know, I keep taking the Facebook quiz. It tells me which superhero yes. I am, and I keep coming up Green Lantern. I don't know why. I wish I it was something why. else. But you don't have yeah. any fear. So I had to get the shirt. Yeah, well, that's right. Yeah, exactly. Are you still read comic books? Uh, not that I would admit on camera. Yeah. Maybe I do. I maybe did. I don't. I don't know. Well, I have kids now, so yes. <laughs> okay. I have kids now, so yes, you of have course. To. Yes, yeah, absolutely. So if you're a Marvel guy, um, what is who is your number one Marvel hero and your number one DC hero and why? Marvel is Wolverine. I mean, oh, Thor, really? Thor is a close second because I really love Why mythology. Wolverine? Wolverine is is the noble savage. So the, totally. the character is just, uh, I think it's just always intrigued me. Yeah. The claws, and of course it was, you know, that was always interesting. But yeah, like I said, it's the noble savage. You have this very, always represented very noble guy, but he has the berserker fury. So yeah. it's always this tension between the two sides in him. And he's consistent, <clears throat> consistently when he's most Logan, when he's most him, he's doing the right thing. Right, exactly. That's interesting. Right. And then DC was the Flash. 
Why? Always the Flash. The speed, I don't know. I, I don't even. It wasn't even so much <laughs> Barry Allen. Barry Allen, not Barry Wally Allen. West, yeah, not, not Jay Garrick. No, but I like the helmet. I like Jay's helmet. Yes. Yeah, I like the uniform. How does better. it stay on? That's the big question. I, you know, I know. You I know. and I watched one of the recent series, and I yeah. thought, how does that stay on his head? There's no strap, nothing. Yeah. So no, I agree. The, the yeah, speed that's force. A, that's a, exactly. Must be. Yeah. <laughs> so the speed of, of Barry Allen. Although you know, Batman apparently once said that if his parents hadn't been killed, he would have hoped to grow up to be like Barry Allen. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. You're, see, you're the DC. Well, I don't you know, know those storylines. Yeah, I, it's I a mystery to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about you? Uh, so um, with Marvel, mm -hmm. I think I'd say Captain America. He's my favorite, and I think the reason why is the reason I like DC. I like DC because those heroes are like consistently heroic. That in Marvel, everyone's got to have some kind of angst to them. Right. They've got to have some kind of brokenness, which makes sense. I mean, that's the real world. <laughs> but I kind of like my heroes like to have this pure character. I know it's right. one of the things I like about Captain America, Steve Rogers, is that he just he knows what he's about, and he just goes about it. Right. I love that. Um, and for DC. I can never decide. Everyone says, oh, you like Batman the most. Do you like Superman the most? They all think that they know. And so I just say, yeah, Batman or Superman. Because it right. depends on who's writing them, right? right? So some of the awesome Batman stories, when Batman is the Batmaniest he can be, like I'm like, yes, Batman all the way. But when Superman, if someone has a hold of his story, right. I'm like, this is just so cool. Because both of them, I think in my mind, they both represent like ideals, like human ideals. Right. Of course, as a kid, um, when I couldn't decide, it was always Robin. Because, Robin. Yes, because well, because I have an older brother, right. and so when we were playing Batman and Robin, he's the older brother. He gets to be Batman, and I have to have the tights, which is unfortunate because Robin used to not have tights. He used to just have that like speedo. Oh yes, yeah. M moved into Wear more clothes. Yes, absolutely. Nightwing. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. so Dick Grayson, favorite Robin. Do you have a favorite Robin? Uh, I don't. I can't say that you know, I do. You know no, Batman are? wasn't my. Maybe I shouldn't be saying this to That's you. Okay. Yeah, he no, wasn't. Didn't collect Batman. That was one scene DC. I didn't. Pay. He's fine. That was one of the reasons okay, why I didn't question. like DC. A lot of their superheroes had no superpowers. Yes. So it was like a bunch of guys in tights going out beating people up with their fists. Yeah. That just didn't do it for me. I needed at least a good contingent that had something that okay. made them superhuman. So Question. Yeah. So is a superhero with no superpowers still a superhero? I think they would have, you'd have to take super off of that, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, yeah, but what if they're able to like go toe to toe? Well, I don't know. I guess that's where we'd have to spend our disbelief. So, <laughs> yeah. with Wildcat and some of these other guys yeah. are professional boxers, I don't think. I don't no, know. Wildcat. I don't that's think that would work. That's the stupidest <laughs> thing. In, oh man, we 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 should we should cut it. Yeah. yeah I have the DC Encyclopedia. Uh, damn, it's okay. leather bound. Okay. It's pretty I got nice. The Marvel. Universe, I have the Marvel so, one too. Yeah. <laughs> it is also leather bound. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Up top. Up that way. down low. <laughs> nice to talk to you. This is uh, Nielsen Carlin, and we are at his studio talking comic books and talking superheroes, and I'm really, really loving it. So thank you so much for all of us at Ascension Presents. My name is Father Mike. God bless.